Oh my god. I lost it. But you got his, it's not yours. Oh, wait, I, I can't hear. Okay. These buttons don't touch anything. All these people who Hello and welcome everyone to the Thermographic Diagnostic Imaging and Health Through Awareness webinar. My name is Leisha Getson and I will be your host. Before we begin, just a little housekeeping. The presentation will be about 50 minutes followed by Q&A. You should be able to hear me and the speaker as well as follow the PowerPoint presentation. To the right of your screen you will see a chat box. If you have a question, type it in and submit it. We will get to as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. If for some reason you get cut off from the webinar, you will be able to log back in and fast forward to catch up. Also, all of the presentations will be archived and can be found on our website at tdinj.com under the news and media heading. Okay, let's get started. Our speaker for this evening is Ben Briggs. Ben is a pharmacy graduate of the Philadelphia College of Pharmacy and Science, Science and owner of the Lionville Natural Pharmacy and Health Food Store. He is a compounding pharmacist with a background in nutrition, herbal medicine, holistic therapies, and human hormone replacement therapy. Ben is a member of the American Nutraceutical Association, the International Foundation of Nutrition and Health, and the International Academy of Compounding Pharmacists. Ben is also the co-host of Health Focus, w, Health Focus, WCOJ radio talk show on, on, on alternative medicine. He has co-authored and published numerous articles featuring natural holistic therapies and frequently lectures to healthcare practitioners, community organizations, hospital support groups, and businesses. His presentations include human hormone replacement, nutrition, herbal medicine, functional pain management, cancer, diabetes, and other disease states. Whenever I refer to Ben, I always describe him as one of the smartest, hardest working guys I know. He has a wealth of information and knowledge and we're honored to have him with us this evening. Thank you for being with us, Ben. We're really looking forward to your presentation. Well, wow, thank you, Lee. Community organizations, hospital support groups. So let's get started. We'll be talking this evening about thyroid and adrenal hormones. It's all about the balance. Yeah. Okay, Leisha, um, thank you for that wonderful intro. And um, sorry, we had a little technical difficulties here, but we'll, we'll get through it. It's uh, worst has happened. It's when an Apple talks to a PC, I think. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they speak different languages. That's true. But um, uh, my topic here is, is something that is quite common, especially in, in today's world. Um, and a lot of what goes on in conventional medicine, their viewpoint or their training, misses the groundwork, the bottom of the pyramid, where all these dysfunctions take place, especially when we're looking at thyroid. And most of the time, what, what physicians don't look at is, is the adrenal side. Now, it's like, it's like Murphy's Law. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. And in nature, there's a continual, continual balance. You know, your body is designed that way. You have a left, a right, a front, a back, a top, a bottom. And there's always things going on inside the cell. And we're looking at the cellular level. In functional medicine, we look down to the molecular level where the atoms go in and out. And things like uh, supplements, um, some are positive and some are negative. Uh, minerals, vitamins, hormones, they all are in balance with each other. So just for instance, if you look at something like calcium in the body, it contracts muscle. And its partner, the opposite, is magnesium. So you have to have that balance. So there's contraction and relaxation. And this goes on all the time. Uh, every, every time you look one direction or one other, there's millions of different transactions taking place. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about thyroid and, and, and adrenal 
But the basic hormones, uh, I'm showing that slide now, the main hormone in the human body, which is, is confusing for some when I say this, but the main hormone produced, the mothership, if you will, the mother load in the liver is cholesterol. So the idea of lowering your cholesterol, you create a dysfunction in the fact that you can't make a number of the sexual hormones, and that throws the balance off. Of course, we have estrogens. Now, all estrogens are not the same. There are many synthetic estrogens, xenoestrogens, which are chemical estrogens like pesticides and herbicides and bovine growth hormone. Um, these things are in our environment, which is more like the fire. In the human body, we make three basic ones. Estrone, which is the midsection, the storage estrogen for fats. Then there's estradiol, the above-the-waist estrogen in females, the breasts and the mental capacity. And then there's estriol the fertility estrogen or the cancer protective estrogen, the vaginal estrogen. So when we do compounds, we try to get those in balance. But I don't use the estrone because that can cascade down a pathway which can create what we call estrogens that are changing the DNA. We don't want those. One of the hormones after that we want to look at is the water. Think of estrogen as fire and progesterone as water. And progesterone is, does the opposite things. It's relaxing. It controls every other hormone, including insulin, including serotonin and melatonin, including testosterone and estrogen, DHEA and pregnenolone, and thyroid hormone. Very important. It's the gatekeeper. Let's things in, let's things out. It is a cancer protective hormone. It is not the progestins that you hear about in birth control or in some of the packs that they have for women in HRT, conventional stuff. Now, Pregnenolone is, is what I call the grandmother or grandfather hormone. Pregnenolone is the most abundant, and from it you get others. It is a calming hormone. It is wisdom. It is experience. It is multitasking. So sometimes it's all overlooked. And then we have the thyroid hormones, and there's several of them. There isn't just a synthetic thyroid hormone called synthroid replacement or levothyroxine. Your body makes different sizes. The short it names are T2, T3, reverse T3, T4, and T7. And the 7, the numbers indicate how many iodine atoms are there. Very important. And when the doctor measures thyroid hormones, he's often measuring the pituitary hormone, TSH. It is not a thyroid hormone. It is just a stimulator of the warehouse, the thyroid gland, to release the pro-hormone or the carrier hormone called T4 which is mimicked by the synthetic thyroid hormones that are presented to folks. So by giving the T4 this TSH will come into balance and every physician for the most part understands that they have finished their job. Well it goes further than that. Of course adrenal hormones, uh, the adrenal gland sitting atop the kidney makes various hormones but the ones that are we're going to be talking about mostly tonight are cortisol, the stress hormone, cortisone, inflammation hormone, and aldosterone, which is the fluid and water and blood pressure hormone. And keep in mind that they come directly from our good friend progesterone. So what is PMS? What is premenopause? Well, is a deficiency in progesterone or an estrogen dominant balance, imbalance. So what is PMS? What is premenopause? Well, you don't handle stress, you get inflammation, and you get bloated. So Correcting that, most times women only need a little progesterone to balance out the estrogens that are dominant, even though they may look in normal, normal levels. Other hormones are insulin, melatonin, serotonin, dopamine, GABA, gabapentin. I mean, GABA, which is a brain. These are chemicals in the brain, neurotransmitters. And of course, there's adrenaline and and noradrenaline, and also a hormone that is very, very important, and that's vitamin D. It is hormone. And in the gastrointestinal tract, which is very important to be healthy, you convert D3 into serotonin. That's where it's made, about 95%. That's why when you go to the shore, your serotonin levels rise because you're getting the D3 through the skin. Mm -hmm. So that's just a brief overlook. Now, um, you can think of adrenal hormones as the gas that gets the car going. Uh, it burns sugars for energy. It's short-lived. And then there's crash. So people who crash in the afternoon, 
or wake up in the middle of the night, they're, what is happening because of the stressors in their, in their life, um, create a reactive hypoglycemia. So when that happens, the brain says, well, I have my fats to run on because the brain is made 62% of cholesterol. It has the oxygen, but its fuel is sugars. So what happens is the blood sugar drops, the brain turns on the adrenal gland to put out epinephrine, to, adrenaline, to make you wake up and search for food. That's why the afternoon there's this crash, because you're running on adrenals. When you're stressed, you're running on adrenals. You're running on the insulin effect on carbohydrates rather than the fats. Like the thyroid stimulates the mitochondria in the cells to burn fat. It's the accelerator. It's the cruise control. It provides you with slow, even-keeled energy and raising the body temperature. So one of the old-fashioned ways of looking at thyroid is to look at um, the, the diet by looking at their temperature first thing in the morning. And it should be an axillary under the arm temperature of 97.8. Now the next slide here just shows you the pathway of the hormones, the things you see there in green are cancer protective hormones. Pregnenolone, progesterone, DHEA, testosterone, and the one you can't see is estriol, which is down below. It's kind of off the screen. I'm sorry about that. But that is a, an estrogen could be used with even breast cancer patients. And especially uh, uh, progesterone. That's very important. Adrenal diseases, by, by most people's uh, physicians, look at Cushing's syndrome, which is low adrenal hormone function. Now, JFK, our, our president, had a, a Cushing's syndrome, so he had to use amphetamines back then and steroids and concoctions by his doctor who injected him very many times with these vitamin combos. The natural form is cortisol and hydrocortisone, which we can compound and it can be used to help bring back uh, that person into normalcy. And there's Addison's disease, which is an excess of adrenal hormone function. Uh, part of the problem with using too much of the cortisol and these the steroids that they used and the amphetamines was that it caused causes bone loss. The bone and everything else deteriorate very rapidly. Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome is one of those conditions and fibromyalgia are really an imbalance in thyroid and adrenal function. The balance is off. Numerous times uh, people have come to me, patients, especially females, is about 65% have those conditions uh, diagnosed for them. Fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. And they give them drugs for pain and for muscle relaxation. And these antidepressants that have been uh, manipulated molecularly by the pharmaceutical industry, antidepressants and anti-seizure medicines, to relieve the symptoms, but they're treating symptoms. They're not healing the patient. Hypoadrenalism, of course, is when the person just burns out. And adrenal other diseases can happen with a, a condition called chronic variable immune disease, which is a chronic disease state where the immune system can't catch up. And using hydrocortisone can help balance that out. Uh, of course, stress um, raises the cortisol. And, and Cortisol can be a lifesaver or it can be a life disruptor. It is an endocrine disruptor. Every hormone in excess, uh, with excess cortisol does not work. What happens is the hormone cortisol will block the receptor site for the hormone that is in the bloodstream, in the river, loaded with hormone on the barge, cannot empty and deliver its fuel or its, its uh, reaction to the inner side of the cell, intracellular action. That's where it takes place. That's where quantitative analysis of hormones, whether they're estrogens, progesterone, testosterone, thyroid, adrenal, serotonin, they have to be seen how they work efficiently. They have to be the active form in the intracellular side of, of the cell membrane. And progesterone, again, I am keep coming back to that, is the regulator. If you have too much, it shuts the door. If you don't, don't have enough, it will try to bring more in. Um, high cortisol, cortisol will block the cortisone because it's its twin. Here's our balance again. If you have high stress, your anti-inflammatory hormone, which is the seesaw, is pushed down and you have inflammation. Also, you'll have fluid retention. 
Also, cortisol will make your insulin turn into fat in the belly. So the midsection begins to, no matter how little you eat or how, or how much you exercise, when you're in this stressful mode, you're going to have this muffin top. Also, brain fog. You can't think clearly. Blood pressure changes. Maybe go up, maybe drop. There's insulin resistance. Increased blood sugar floats around and then turns into fat. And some of your cholesterol levels, when the doctor looks at them, you, you, you miss, they often miss triglycerides, which is the sugar fat. And that's even more sticky than some of the others. Of course, there's fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, PMS, perimenopause, and thyroid resistance. I've written a number of articles on thyroid resistance. Um, you can find them on the website. You can read about it, what, it, what it's really talking about. There's types of, of adrenal testing. Of course, there's blood. You can test that in the morning to see where it is, to see that it's in the right levels. And you also want to test its direct um, balancing component, which is DHEA. But you have to check DHEA sulfate, the metabolite of DHEA, so that you know that it's done its job. And there's CRP. That's, uh, that, that's an inflammatory marker. You want to look at that. Um, C-reactive protein. You want to make sure that's not elevated too. There's great saliva testing, and that's coming on to on to the surface. More and more physicians are using it. We happen to use, I think, with Dr. Getson, Neurosciences, which is the only FDA-approved saliva testing. And that one, you get samples before throughout the day to measure your your cortisol to see where it is. It should cortisol should should look like a sliding board should begin in the morning pretty high and then slide on through the day and then just kind of fade away by about 4 o'clock. A lot of times you'll see the cortisol at nothing in the morning and these are the sleep deprived because it's high at night. The circadian rhythm's off. The sliding board starts later in the evening for whatever reason. Or it can be dippy. It could be like a roller coaster. So you'll get up okay and then it'll drop around midday and then shoot back up in the evening. So you have these changes in your sleep pattern. Because cortisol also affects your melatonin, your sleep hormone. So any hormone that's doing benefit to you in the presence of high cortisol is not going to work. Um, there is a, 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 what they call Dr. Sargent back in the 80, 1890s came up with this um, this type of test where you take, this anybody can do this, you take uh, the end of a blunt instrument, like a fountain pen, or, or you know, a pen, and you and you run a six, about for about six inches, right across the belly or the inner forearm. And what will happen is the white line should, be, if it remains more than two minutes, then you have low adrenals. It should turn red and then just go away. There's also a supine standing blood pressure test where you lay on a, on a bed, the doctor put, takes the blood pressure, and you stand up quickly. And if the blood pressure doesn't go up and it drops, you get faint. Well, that's another sign. There's also an iris uh, contra contraction. You take a flashlight, and uh, a normal ration would be you shine it in the iris. The iris contracts and stays contract. If you're low in adrenal, the iris will contract. But it won't remain. It'll it'll open up and then close, and then open up and then close. So that's another. These three little simple um, functional tests you can do. I mean, they're ancient. They're not new. Uh, treatment options, of course, is to relax, um, exercise, qigong, yoga, tai chi, meditation, prayer. Change your diet. There's lots of inflammatory uh, foods out there, and there are some tests we can do. There's ALT, there's, there's quite a few others you can check for your food allergies. And gluten, of course, is uh, abundant everywhere, and I think if we can all get away from that, we'll feel a lot better. There are other techniques. There are some flower essences that you can use, uh, which are not drugs, which help uh, generate energy through the brain that is calming and releasing stressors or hidden things subconsciously. Getting your sleep. Um, Reduce whatever is stressing you. I mean, you know, get away from the situation that's causing it. Sometimes we're used to patterns and we go back to the same thing, whether it's a job or relationship or whether it's our food habits. And, of course, comfort foods are going to make us eat those comfort foods, those things that taste good and they're feel-good foods for a short period of time. Alcohol is another one. Um, so we have to adapt and move move on. Um, medications I mentioned 
earlier, the cortisol and the hydrocortisone are prescriptions. There are plenty of glandular. So somebody just starting out, you don't want to fill them full of the pure hormone unless you've been tested. You can start with the glandulars. And they work sort of like as a mild uh, conditioning, refeeding the adrenal glands themselves so they get back into um, good function. In other words, for through the stress, the adrenal glands will actually shrink, and sometimes people can feel it in the top of their back, the middle of their back, adrenal stress. And of course, DHEA sulfate you measure, you can always get that. But don't go in into a health food store and just buy it because women need less the men, and, and that's one thing I wish that they would not sell over the counter because it needs to be measured. People feel good on it, but then what happens after a while is it creates a stimulus effect that you get out of whack with your sleep, and you'll get um, you'll lose your, your hair and you'll get oily skin like a teenager. Adaptogens are great uh, herbal medicines. They've been around for centuries, thousands of years. Uh, rhodiola, ashwagandha, licorice, ashandra, yusho, ginseng. There's many, many of them. Um, they're very, very uh, adaptive to the stress goes up, they calm you. If you're tired, they bring your energy back up. Uh, they work very well. And there's, there's oodles of them out there. You want to get a professional one from some of the professional companies and work with a, someone that's going to know what they're doing. You can't just go online. I get this all the time. People bring things to me. and uh, it, It's comical. It's like, well, yeah, I, I, I can sell that to you, but I'm not sure where it came from. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure of, of the, whether or not the dissolution rate, how it's going to go into the system, or whether it's been certified. You know, there's a lot of things out there. You have to be careful. B vitamins are very important. B5 is a panathenic acid, which boosts the adrenal. Methyl B12, a lot of the B12 that we uh, would take, unless it's under the tongue, unless it's the methyl form, it's not going to work. It has to be under the tongue. Uh, or injected, and some physicians will do that. And for, for lots of things like depression and fibromyalgia and Lyme disease, the Lyme spirochetes love B12. They just eat it up like candy. So we become low, and that affects the thyroid also. Of course, folic acid, and there's an active form called 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate, which you don't have to worry about it changing over. And B6, another you know, kind of an anti inflammatory, uh, mild diuretic effect. And bioflavonoids from the plant, the C, the vitamin C, work very well too. Other things that help is CoQ10, which is an oxygen transporter. Inata, which is a, a, a pill that helps with your mental energy and your physical energy. And Power Adapt is a new one that I found about a year ago, which is a combination of some of those adaptogens, which you can use when you work out or take a walk, or you have a long day. It comes in a liquid, you can put it in your water, um, or there's a pill form. And carnitine, arginine, lysine, and L-tyrosine, oh, that's a misspelling, but L-tyrosine, those are uh, amino acids, and they come from meat. You cannot get them from plants. So if you are vegan, you have to find a way to get those back into you. There's a little product I have called amino acid quicksorb. It's a liquid. You squeeze it into your water, or if you're down and slow, middle afternoon, you put it under your tongue. That means you have to go eat. And probiotics, because you want to keep that, small intestine, that gut, flora, healthy because that's your whole immune system. So if it's off, well, number one, you can't convert your D to serotonin and you can't convert your, your thyroid hormones, which I'll get to in a second here, into the active forms to be used. We measure D3. We want to make it between 60 and 80. You don't have any toxicity problems. 5,000 units during the winter should be fine. Um, and then you want to make sure that in summer, keep checking it because at that point, um, you can go down to 2,000. Now, ferritin is the transporter. And I always measure that. You can measure your iron, but again, it has a, a UPS truck or a FedEx truck, the ferritin, and that's to save that iron when it's needed. So in order for you to feel healthy and, and energized, your iron needs to have the ferritin transporter. So anywhere between 70 and 150. Now, it starts to rise when women stop menstruating, and of course in men who never have, and it can be a little bit a little bit of a drag, can store too much iron and make you tired, because you've got to remember that the, the liver itself filters every uh, red red blood cell every 21 seconds and if your hemoglobin is going through there and it's very heavy the filter gets kind of clogged 
harder for the heart to push the blood through, thicker blood, so it's fatigue. The only way you get rid of it is a chelation. There are a couple of supplements out there that kind of work. Or you can just give blood. Go to the Red Cross and, and give the blood and you, you take the iron out. Sort of like the old days when they used leeches where they bled people. Uh, I don't recommend it for anybody unless you know what you're doing. But if you're getting up into the 200s you know, you, and you're tired, um, you want to take a look at, so that it may be a false reading. It may look like hemochromocytosis, which is heavy iron. Uh, foods. Well, we want to eat good fats found in nature. Eggs, nuts, butter, olive oil, avocado, coconut oil. Um, dark chocolate's okay, but not Hershey's. Okay, I mean, not, not milk chocolate. These are good fats. Animal protein. Um, good, good organic meat from, from beef is fine. Fish, turkey, chicken. Bison, venison, things that are grass-fed naturally, uh, especially the chicken, you know, the fowl, you want them to be free-range. Good colored vegetables. Most things in nature that are white are not very good for you. I mean, sugar, flour, rices, white rice, things like that. But you want colored. They have plenty of antioxidants. And when you cook them, it's important to try to eat them so you don't destroy the components of them. You want them to eat them raw or steamed or stir-fried. It's a great afternoon snack is to take something like um, a fat, uh, e either some guacamole or av avocado, maybe even some one of the nut butters, um, put it on a, a, a cucumber, cut it in half uh, down the middle, pull the seeds out, make a boat, eat that. You'll feel so much better if you eat every three or four hours, but not the carbs. Um, if you're going to have the... the Low-carb beans, legumes, lentils are a great choice. Black beans, there's, there's many of them. You, just want, you don't want the starchy ones. And complex whole grains, buckwheat, steel cut oats, uh, quinoa, wild rice, hummus, barley. Hummus is a great snack, especially for kids. Give them some carrot sticks or green peppers. Um, again, the cucumbers are fine. Whatever they can use, just not the corn chips. That's the problem. Berries, wonderful fruits. They're low in sugar. The smaller they are, the darker they are, the more antioxidant, the less sugar. The tart ones, especially cherries if you have inflammation. The dark bean cherries are, are, are wonderful. And water. We should drink a lot of water, a little green tea, a little red wine. Coffee's fine, it's, it's, but not to overdo it. It's, it's not, it's, this is a Starbucks world. This is what happens around 3. And in the morning, people supercharge on the Wawa and the Starbucks coffees, and they're running on pure, pure jet fuel, and then they crash. And next thing you know, they're back getting another one. And that's just a vicious cycle. It destroys the, the effect of the, of the cells. They can't live on that. Sugar, alcohol, nicotine, MSG, um, corn, and high fructose corn syrup. Very badly. Uh, it should, it's very bad as with sodas. It's what's in sodas now. And artificial sweeteners are, are no-no. Even the Splenda and I'll get into that in a second. The, the Splenda is a sugar molecule with four chlorine on it, which will deplete your iodine in your system, which has effect on the thyroid. And of course, anyone has migraines, I get them off of any MSG or um, any artificial sweeteners right away. And the, the, the pink, the blue, and the, and the yellow are all not foods. They don't belong in the body. Any trans fats with, and preservatives and dyes and um, anything that says it's low fat, they've taken out the thing in there that's of any value to you. If it's naturally low in fat, it's fine. So when you grocery shop, you go around the perimeter. You don't go in the middle. That's where all the goodies are. <laughs> and cereals, uh, you know, we, we see this all the time. It's cereal commercials for kids. Part of the ADD and ADHD is really a hypoglycemic effect, I, I believe, for sure. Changing that kid, putting that child back on some eggs or some cooked oatmeal with some butter in it and cinnamon. He'll have fuel through the day. Um, otherwise, he goes to school and he starts to crash and he gets unfocused and cranky and whiny. Not good at all. Um, thyroid gland here, just a picture of it. It's right around the trachea when it starts to grow because of an autoimmune state or low thyroid production or some other deficiencies. You'll get hoarse or you, you, you always have trouble, you may have trouble swallowing. It's a little butterfly gland. It has such power you, you, you can't believe. It's often overlooked to get those hormones in balance from that. Like I said, I, I see this every day. My practice in 1992, I first started, stumbled on the thyroid and its, its complications um, 
from the functional medicine and a number of people from the Broda Barnes Foundation and others taught me more about it. Dr. Uh, David Brownstein is one you can Google that. He he has a lot of information. Get his newsletter. He'll tell you. He, he's one of my favorite ones to go to these days. Um, again, TSH is not a thyroid hormone. D doctors regulate TSH by using synthetic thyroid. They're not helping the patient. Um, it's a stimulator hormone for the gland. If your gland is primarily failing, TSH will go up. Um, but that's for primary hypothyroidism. There's several other types of thyroid. Um, thyroid hormone uh, values are average of all people. Okay, It's not just the healthy people. It's the sick people too. So if they say, oh, your numbers are fine, or your numbers are okay, you hear this over and over and over. Well, you, you got to do this simple thyroid testing to figure out how the person feels. And there's probably 40 different symptoms of low thyroid, uh, especially if you have a, uh, an ancestry of, of the Celtic, the Nordic, the red hair, the light eyes. Um, for some reason, from years and years of not being exposed to many much sunlight with long, long evenings uh, of darkness uh, in those regions, uh, developed a deficiency in converting the, the, the sunlight into the D to activate thyroid hormone. Gender is important. Um, Income has a lot to do with it. Again, it has to do with the stress and other healthy, other health issues. Certain drugs will, will cause the thyroid hormone not to convert to the active form. Remember, these are quantitative, not qualitative av averages. Qualitative averages were kicked out in the man managed care years back in the 80s because of the expense of them. And so any physician that's not at least <laughs> my age, 60 or more, doesn't know about those. And, and it's hard to get the younger physicians to get it. But whatever, you know, it's, I'm not putting them down. It's just what they know. You want the intracellular values, what switches on and what switches out. And you want to know what that receptor site is doing. Is it helping, uh, doing its job, or is it suppressed? Uh, T4 is levothyroxine. T3 is just a supply. It's just like loading up your, your car with lumber to go home to build a deck. T3 is the actual deck itself. And then there's enzymes that take that T4 and make it uh, make your deck for you. Reverse T3 is the off switch. Uh, T3 is the on switch to turn on the heat. So just like a stove, you have an on and an off. Um, there are free values to look at and total values. Total value tells you what's on the barge. Free value tells you what's, what gets to do the work. Miscellaneous ones I always check are thyroid binding globulin, which goes up under stress, or estrogen uh, that causes sex hormone binding globulin to come out. It binds up your hormone. So even your numbers may look good if this, if this is elevated, then of course, again, it's bound up. It's, it's trapped. D3, again, iodine, selenium, manganese, vitamin A, and zinc. And these are critical. They make an enzyme in the diiodinases which help you um, to move that T4 to T3. This is a diagram, um, T4. Those purple balls there are actually iodine atoms. They're put together by those benzene rings that you see, those uh, hexagonal rings, are tyrosine, which only comes from red meat, okay, animal meat. So if you're not eating that, then the tyrosine is, has to be made, and it puts stress on the body. Now, T4 is the transporter. Uh, what happens in the cell is that it converts to T3. The arrow comes off on that end. That's the on switch. turns on the heat. And then uh, when you reach a certain body temperature, um, this happens every millisecond, by the way. This is so fast you could never see it. Then the switch goes off to reverse T3. Dr. Uh, Dennis Wilson understood this, and he found this out many years ago, and um, he came up with a, a, a syndrome called Wilson's Thyroid Syndrome, which if you Google that, you can read about it. It's usually induced by some sort of a trauma. Uh, it could be a surgery, a childbirth. It could be a car accident. It could be a divorce. It could be financial issues. Um, many things would, would trigger that to happen where the T4, the carrier, goes to the off switch. But unless you dif differentiate T3 from reverse T3, you'll never know the difference. Um, if you can see this diagram here, it's a little small, but see what happens here? Up in the hypothalamus, up in the, the little brain, the hypothalamus computer, and it picks up signals to stimulate the printer, the pituitary, to go to the gland, in this case, 
uh, the gland is the thyroid gland. And the TSH is stimulating it to release T4. And if you see that, that outline there, that little barrier, that's outside the cell. So the T4 approaches the gate. And what happens? Well, progesterone regulates whether it can come in. If it comes in, then 5 da iodinase forms. And that comes from the, the nutrients I mentioned, the D, the zinc, the selenium, the manganese, uh, and the vitamin A, which are all fat soluble. People who don't have a gallbladder or have gastric reflux disease are blocking the ability to absorb them so they can't get the T4 in the cell, which then converts. I'm going to go back to the slide, back up one, and you see the T3. The enzymes take it off there on that left-hand bottom corner. Now we have an active hormone. Back to the diagram. It goes into the nucleus, that little circle down there, and that turns on the mitochondria. And the mitochondria raises your temperature. Now, the 5 deiodinases are D1, 2, and 3. Um, one turns on the heat, one turns off the heat, and one works inside the pituitary. So sometimes when a physician, if there's high levels of stress, the D2 causes there to be high levels of T4 and T3 trapped in the pituitary. So the TSH looks normal. So you have to go by the body temperature in those cases. We can measure deiodinases, but it's very expensive, and I have yet to get a physician to do it. Here's a picture of the mitochondria, these little organelles. They're all over the body. These are the energy-producing cells. This is where you burn fat, and you make ATP, which helps you run like on the diesel fuel. The Greyhound bus is rolling down the road nice and nice and smoothly. You need to pass, then your Ferrari comes out, the, the adrenal to run from the bear in the woods, and it passes the vehicle and you come back to normal. It's a wonderful book called um, Zebras Don't Get Ulcers <laughs> because they either run, mm. away from the, run away from the lion and don't get eaten, and your cortisol, your stress hormone comes back down, or they get eaten, and then they don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so I'm just, <laughs> just, I'm just being facetious, but that's it. Functional tests for thyroid. Um, these are things you can do at home, and I do this probably several times a day here in the store. Uh, you paint a two-inch square on the wrist of a person. Make sure they're not allergic to shellfish. And it should stay there for 24 hours. The faster it goes away, the more deficient you are. Now, we can certainly do a urine test to determine your iodine deficiency, but it costs 70 bucks. This test costs nothing, so most people have a chart. They call in the next day. I convince them to take this home because you're going to come back for it anyway. I've had no one return it. Um, it's just kelp drops. The Asians, by the way, they eat 100 times the iodine in their diet every single day. They eat a lot of seaweed. A lot of their broths are from shellfish. They have very little obesity, diabetes, heart disease, <laughs> many cancers. Mm -hmm. And the cancers for the breast, in days gone by, when there was fibrocystic breast or ovarian cysts or uterine fibroids, physicians actually use high doses of iodine to dissolve them, and they disappeared very, quite rapidly. But it didn't cost a lot of money to do that, and it was a simple procedure. Um, the other test is to take your temperature under your arm. If females are menstruating, day two through five of bleeding, First thing, without moving. Um, if you're not, it doesn't matter, but your temperature should average 97.8 degrees. Otherwise, you're hypothyroid or possibly hypoadrenal. It could be either, but it's usually thyroid, especially if it creeps up on you about the time um, you reach the age of 45, men and women, because just like every gland, just like men's testicles shrink and the testosterone goes down, well, women's ovaries stop producing their hormones. Well, why wouldn't the gland start to produce less? Well, we don't have to put you back as to age 18, but it's nice to put someone back to the level where they feel good. In the third, mid-30s, the 40s, you know, we're not doing hormones to make you look like uh, a movie star. We're just making you feel better. A comprehensive thyroid panel, uh, the, the TSH, free T4. Um, we need T3, of course, reverse T3 to determine if you look at Wilson's thyroid syndrome again, you'll see what, how important that is. Um, you look at the total and the, and the total T3 and T4, just so you know how much the gland is, is putting out. And then you need things that talk about the autoimmune diseases, the TPO and the TGA. 
And sex hormone binding globin, I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, increases with stress and excess estrogen activity and xenoestrogens, which are in cosmetics also. Lots of xenoestrogens in cosmetics. Um, low progesterone and gladen allergies. In other words, the, the, the celiac. So here's prescriptions that I, I recommend. I, I make some custom compounds for sure. They're slow-release T3 and combos of T3 and T4. Uh, they're from amino acids. They're not from animal. There's also Nature Throid. And Nature Throid's been around since 1934, a little obscure company. And they just came out with WP Thyroid, which is totally hypoallergenic. And anybody that has autoimmune states, or I'm putting most people recommending to do that one anyway. It's very inexpensive. I don't recommend any synthetic thyroid hormones at all. You're only making numbers look normal. Um, supplements, the iodine, selenium, the D, the, the, the manganese, the zinc, B12. If your B12 isn't 600, a lot of times the thyroid won't convert. And putting a little B12 back in is amazing. L-tyrosine is, is the amino acid that forms the T4. And the glandulars of thyroid are available also. These glandulars sometimes, uh, you can find them just about anywhere, but you've got to be a little careful with them because you don't want the impurities in there. Of course, the diet, soy is a disruptor for thyroid. Uh, skipped meals, if you skip a meal, the thyroid will slow down. If you try to go low, low calorie, what will happen? Well, the thyroid doesn't need to turn the thermostat up, so it's going to spare what calories you bring in. So if you start to fast too much, then that happens. You want to reduce stress, and there's many things. Holy basil I like quite a bit. It's a, and then one other one of those adaptogens that regulates cortisol and blood sugar. Cavanase is another one, which is similar to the holy basil's effect, but I've had lots of people with anxiety that use that, and they still can walk around without being sated. It's the, old, the old kava is good. Drugs that interfere with the thyroid regulation, statin drugs, birth control, Hormone replacement, antidepressants. Depression is a thyroid symptom. High cholesterol is a slow burning of your cholesterol for your fuel. So statin drugs actually are going against the grain. And steroids, too many steroids. And dysbiosis or candida or yeast or some parasite infection in the bowel will also affect that too. My own program is called the Ben Self uh, Nutritional Program. I came across this in my head. Flying back, <laughs> flying, yeah. flying like back it, on it. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, when you're flying from Seattle across the country and, and you end up getting put down in Dallas because the plane is dropping 50 feet and oh. lightning and thunderstorms, it's like, you know, you, you find your God real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was enlightened, so that we sat yes. there for a while. I said, I got to come up with a an acronym for what I do, and I just said, well, it's my nutritional program. So I said, well, how do I going to put this together? Well, it's breathing, learning how to breathe, mm. yoga, expressing, getting out the toxins. Breathe in through the nose, the oxygen, put that CO2 and other gases out. Exercise. you got to get movement. You keep your joints feeling good. You burn some calories. You sleep better. You relax. Uh, nothing like a, work, a good workout. And s saying no. A lot of people can't do that. They just let people walk all over them. And sleep, of course, seven, eight hours a day is what we're supposed to be doing, maybe even more. And supplements that have been presented to you by someone that does know something rather than Mr. Internet. Elimination. Elimination could be an elimination diet. It could be eliminating <laughs> your, your, your same with your lifestyle, the L part. Eliminate something that's causing you problems. Um, and food, you know, based on an evaluation, I think it's important to have a, a diet plan that's just not the fad diets that are out there because there's, I don't know how many, uh, every time I turn around someone's handing me a book about them, I skim through it and I look at it and I go, well, if you think about moderation, you think about the Mediterranean diet, that's a good first step. And mm -hmm. eating a little bit between meals because that's important, you know, because you, what will happen is you'll get so hungry and if you don't eat the fats, your hormone leptin goes, stays low. So leptin, if you eat a little bit of fat, why do you think the, the, the other cultures ate a little cheese, right? They ate some olives in the beginning, a little appetizer. So what happens, leptin comes up, and they're, they're, they're dining. They're not just eating. So by dining, you're eating slowly. You're letting the leptin come up, and your hunger goes away. So it, it's, it's just a simple little trick. Very interesting. Uh, 
Yeah. Now here's a quote from our, our dear friend Leonardo. If you want to read that, it, you can see it, I guess. Um, he, uh, this man, I, I tried to find a picture of him doing the jumping jack, the famous picture, because that just showed me balance. Because yes. as you could see that, that was definitely what he was, what he was talking about. And here I am. Thanks for participating. I don't go around the mountain anymore. I just go over top. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you, Ben, at the top of that mountain? Yeah, that's me, up and over. Wow. Yeah. I had to do that when I was 65 a few years back. I figured, you know what? I got, I'm going to climb this darn thing. You know? Where is that mountain? <laughs> that is uh, just a pile of rocks. That's uh, that's out there in, in Joshua Tree uh, uh, National Forest. Oh, wow. Out in the desert. Yeah, but it was hot oh. that day, but, but I liked it. It was fun. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and there, there's your last slide. So. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ben. Uh, that was um, amazing information. We see so many people that um, have so many of these symptoms that you're talking about, and nobody seems to know what to do. So thank you so much for shedding some light on this. Yeah, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll do this again. I'll do a PowerPoint on this, and I do quite a few here at the store. Okay. What, now that we have this done once, um, Maybe I can figure out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do. We do have some. Uh, we've got uh, many questions, and some people have written in that there were uh, some technical diff diff difficulties, which we are aware of. Um, we apologize for that. The PowerPoint will be made available, and we can email it to you. But again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Ben does do. Uh, nutritional consults by phone and in person. Ben, do you want to just talk a little bit about that before we take the questions? Sure. Um, what I do is I have two forms to fill out. Uh, one is a nutritional symptom survey. It's about 224 or five questions. And you fill in the dots and circles. I put that through a computer. It analyzes. I don't touch it. It gives me a good uh, foundation of where you are. Um, then there is a, a hormonal I know it might sound odd, but there is a biodentical hormone uh, survey that you need to fill out. There's one for men, there's one for women. And in that is more like your own personal experiences, your own medical history. So I sit, you get that into me with a deposit, we, we schedule you in, and the first go through, uh, the first time through, it could be two hours. I mean, I don't, I take my time and you answer any questions. I, if you have blood work, I ask for it to be brought along, or if you want ahead of time, if you can give me a brief, um, a bit of information about you, uh, I will can fax you over a blood work for your doctor to okay, because I keep the doctor in the loop. All right, I want the doctor to work with me. I want to know what we're doing. I'm not out there playing doctor. I want the, it's a it's, we learned this as a compounding pharmacist, the triad: the patient, the pharmacist, and the physician. So that's how you do it, uh, and, and I, like I said, I, I'm fairly busy. I don't see too many clients per day because I want to take enough time to figure it out. After the, the initial contact, I will recommend some supplements, a diet um, program, and some more blood work most likely, and then we'll just try to figure it out. It, it's just, uh, you're, I'm going to teach you, that patient, that client, the roadmap. This is the roadmap where I see you need to go. And you're telling me where you want to go. And you're in the driver's seat. If you veer off the road, it's not working for you, you can call me. I don't do emails because I would be sitting here all night. <laughs> but in, in, a, in two, three minutes, I can get the answer. So uh, from what you need, and we'll go, we go from there. So, And my staff is very well educated. They, they, they can tell you just about anything if you had a question about something they can pull your chart and take a look at them. So that's how we roll. So so best <laughs> best for people to call then to make an appointment, right? Yeah, just call and, okay. and ask, ask for Joyce. She's the one that will get that information out to you. But if she's off or if she's gone for the day, then one of the others can take care of Alice is the other girl in the back that uh, helps out in that area. Okay, and the number to, to call if you would like to schedule an appointment with Ben is 610 Three six three seven four seven four. The right. Lion Lionville Natural Pharmacy is located at three zero nine Gordon Drive in Lionville, Pennsylvania. Zip code one nine three four one. Yeah, and if you just go, go ahead. ahead. I was just going to give you the website. Yeah, that's that. That could tell you more all about. It. I'll tell you all what to do too. Just look on the left hand column 
of lionrx.com. When you bring a site up, it'll tell you what about the surveys that you could download and start there. Okay. Okay, yeah, let's take some questions. Okay. Okay, the first question is from Rose. Can you get off thyroid meds if you have been on them for years? Um, it depends. Now, if she's had a thyroidectomy or she has Hashimoto's or she has um, Graves' disease, no. But she can always, if she's on synthetic, of course that could be a problem because the body's receptor sites have been, think of it as being stretched out of place. Okay. So to go to the natural, we have to sort of taper you off synthetic and begin to put the bioidentical, which are FDA approved, by the way. These are they've been around forever. There's Armor Thyroid, which I don't recommend anymore because they changed. FDA made them change their fillers, and we we have a poor dissolution or absorption of that product. So sometimes it goes in very rapidly. Sometimes it doesn't go in at all. So the doctors get discouraged because they're trying to balance numbers. And the person's feeling yucky one day and good the next. So by doing the Nature Thyroid uh, and the WP Thyroid, that company, if you want to know that website, it's R-L-C, Ralph, Larry, Charlie, uh, labs.com. And that can give you information about their product. But can you get off? Most likely not, but it's okay. If you have your right dose, it's just like, well, this is what I need now. You know, I'm not trying to give you 150% of thyroid hormone. I'm trying to give you enough to make you feel like your old self. Okay? Okay. Next question is from Eileen, and it is, how can I provide dietary support to my thyroid and adrenals? Now, I, I know you had the foods, do's and don'ts. Is there anything that you would add to that, or does that cover it? Well, no. I think uh, you can try some adrenal glandulars uh, for, for sure. Um, the sugars are the detrimental part. Uh, you, you can get your exercise program going, get movement going. Um, and vitamin D, very important. Zinc and iodine. Now the others, vitamin A, your, your orange foods, your carrots, your pumpkin, um, your, your peppers, those sort of things have a lot of vitamin A. So that would kind of help in that, that direction there. Or you could get them measured and we could give them to you in a combo, in some sort of a, a multivitamin, you know. Right. Okay. Okay, uh, next question is from Nancy. What causes Graves' disease? Could being gluten sensitive for over 30 years cause it? Uh, it could be, yes. It's an autoimmune state, so if you, if you have gluten sensitivity, then you have autoimmune issues going on, you know, automatically. So every little thing could cause that. Uh, it could be hereditary also. Um, you know, it could be that someone in your family had that. Um, th there is some concern about iodine with it. Some some venues say you stay away from it. Others say it is the deficiency that causes it. So it's hard to say. It's like a thyroid storm. The, the thyroid just goes nuts. You know, it just yeah. starts putting out hormone like all over the place with, with no control. Is it a pituitary problem, a hypothalamic problem? It's hard to say. Is it from a trauma? Perhaps. Um, it's complicated yeah. uh, disease state. I don't see much of it, but I do see it. But those who are on the nature natural thyroid you know, do do fairly well with it okay. after the storm. <laughs> after the storm, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All uh, right. Next question. Um, this is from Rose. She would like to change to Armor Thyroid. She has she has been on. I'm not going to be able to say this right. Levox, thro Levox throw in, throw in. Yeah, right. She's been on T4. Armor, I don't recommend, and I kind of answered that earlier. Okay. You want, you want to go to Nature Throw. You'll get a better, even keel, um, and you'll feel better. Armor, like I said, is used to be very good, but it's not hypoallergenic. And when the company was sold, and I want to say 2004 or five, the new owners move the plant to a different location or we can't quite figure they bought product from a foreign place either way the plant was contaminated Wow! so they shut the plant down so you couldn't get armor anymore for a while so wow. they cleaned, cleaned the plant up cleaned out their, their raw material and when they did the FDA in their wisdom you know 
Mm. With, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm uh-huh. oxymoron. They oxymoron. They came in and said, okay, look, um, since you are a DESI drug, and that would be anything that was grandfathered in after the new rules put in place in 1962 by the FDA. We want you to upscale the way you do it, and they change the fillers, how the pill is bound together. Because you know, you know what I'm saying is you're talking about micrograms, you know, thousands of a milligram of active component. You could never see that. Right. So they have to put stuff with it to make the pill. So when they did the fillers. As people that were on armor when it came back, they were having trouble. They weren't feeling right. The numbers were all over the place. And um, we kind of dug into it and researched it. It came out that they had changed the manufacturing um, procedure because of the FDA. So I don't recommend the armor anymore, especially now since I have a hypoallergenic thyroid. The WP thyroid or nature thyroid, either one, would be much better. And it's, okay. it's, it's their equivalents. I'd have to, I could tell her if she called. I have a chart. It'll tell you what doses you use to convert. Okay, so you're saying the the alternative would be WP or uh, Nature Thyroid. Nature Nature Thyroid or WP Thyroid, okay. either one. They're, they're they're from the same company. One is more hypoallergenic than the original, which was Nature Thyroid. Okay. Okay. A uh, couple more uh, right. from from Agnes. Thyroid levels can be tested. What tests can be done to check your adrenal level? Well, you, you check your cortisol, your AM cortisol, and you can do those tests that I mentioned in this, in in the program. The standing, if you're laying down, stand up quick. If you get dizzy, that means your adrenals are low. You can do the the end of a pencil, a pen on your forearm. If the line stays there more than two minutes, then it means the adrenals are low. And you can do the pupil test, but somebody will help to help you do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can do a saliva test if you want, of a 24-hour cortisol, which is very good. It'll tell you where your cortisol is, when it comes in, or if it does come in. And that way you can tell for sure. All right? Okay. Yeah. And DHEA. Those those are some simple tests people could do at home. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Not a problem. They used to, doctors used to do these things, see? Oh. This is old school. This (laughs) This is old school. You know when you, you know when the doc would cross tell you to cross your, your, your leg and hit you on the knee? Yes. Okay, well, that, yeah, that's a neurological test, but it's really a thyroid test because thyroid, when it runs low, it causes the tendons to to shrink or dry out so you don't kick as quickly. Oh, matter, wow. matter of fact, I have a, 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 a nutritional physician, you know, a, a functional medicine physician here in the area who has a device now that you hook to it, maybe Phil wants to get it, you put these, it's sort of like doing EKG, and you hit them on the knee, and it tells you exactly the speed, and it tells you the low or, or high thyroid function. Wow. So, now, I would get one, but they're a lot of money, and I'm, I'm, I can't play doctor, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I get criticized of that all the time anyway. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, next question. This is from Christine. I know I have high cortisol levels, so what can be done to reduce it? Have many of these symptoms. Ask her if she's married. <laughs> <laughs> High cortisol. Well, we can do some um, work with that. I think the cavanase is one thing that works very well for that. And there's also a product called Cortisol Manager. Okay. Cortisol Manager, you take at night. Um, it's not a sedative, but it starts to reconfigure your release of your cortisol. And you start sleeping deeper and resting. In the morning, you wake up refreshed with a good fresh supply of cortisol that evens out during the day and then you can use the cavernase or the holy basil uh, during the daytime just to take the edge off. Yeah. Um, I'm actually taking both of those things you know from your recommendation and I must say I am my sleep is not great but I am sleeping a little better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you got to get your sleep that that's part of it. But yeah. you know the the stressors if if they're in a workplace and you're on a computer all day um, then you have to avert your eyes. You know, every 15 or 20 minutes, stand up, walk around, get it away, because that constant motion of what we cannot see, perceive, in that iris is making it contract and open and contract and open minusculely, and oh, affects, wow. the, affects the brainstem. You know, which is causes stress. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that so, makes sense. Yeah, never thought of that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, how about? Can you take a couple more, Ben? 
Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, this is from Amy. Will taking a melatonin supplement nightly cause the body to stop making natural melatonin? Um, maybe. Maybe, like anything. It's just like I get that question a lot from people who are on the hormones, you know, whether it's estrogen or testosterone. If I take it, will I stop? Well, you might, but the melatonin um, is a safe hormone. You could take quite a bit of it. If you take too much, people say, does it work for me? I, I couldn't sleep. Well, it's because you already have enough. It okay. can, it's, the, it's the happy hormone. So, no, in a short, it's called the travel uh, sleep aid because people get out of sync with the, the time changes if they travel like to another country or whatever. Right. Um, but no, I've had people on as much as 15 milligrams just to get them to sleep. Yeah. And and then you, you taper off and, and it will come back. Like any gland, you'll, you'll make it again. But I will say that if you, if you sleep in the dark, the pineal gland that makes melatonin, okay, will come out. If you have a night light or a you turn your clock to the side or you have a, a TV in the room, yeah, your melatonin will not uh, be produced. And, of course, there's this cortisol fellow that will block your melatonin at the receptor. So mm. sometimes, I'm a female, sometimes if, if, if their levels are a little low in their progesterone, you give a little progesterone on the carotid, just a small amount. I'm talking 10, 12 milligrams, not a pharmaceutical dose. At night, you can that'll that'll give you a nice relaxing feeling because it'll turn to the the uh, hydroxypregnenolone, which makes you sleep and activates melatonin. So there's lots of little tricks. Yeah. But no, I wouldn't be too concerned if you're using it. If you have to sleep, use it. Okay. But, the, but there is the Cavanase Ultra PM, which is the Cavanase, as you might know, Alicia, with yeah. the, with the melatonin. And almost I, I think 99% of the people who take that sleep. They they do go to sleep. Some don't, but you know that's that's rare. And it's rare. Yeah. But you will sleep. You'll want to just not roll over and sleep another hour. Or so. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I do. That's the one I do take the Cavanese PM. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can attest to that. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, come. There are a couple more. So sure. someone says, Christine asks, how does someone naturally re reverse hypo hyperthyroidism? Naturally, there really isn't too much. You have to kind of take the drug, but keep in mind, it's an old drug. All right. Okay. So it's when I'm talking old. A lot of the the best drugs we ever had are no longer available because of the um, well, the patent runs out and they become very inexpensive. So the pharmaceutical industry doesn't want to bother with it. But if, if she's taking you know um, methimazole, that that's fine, or T, TPO, I guess it is. Uh, but I don't even know if that one's available. I, it, that's the best way to do it. Uh, you could take a lot of iodine, but I don't know how to control that, and I don't know that anyone does. It would stop that, but um, it could also go the other way, too. So, yeah, there's probably not much choice. If there is, I haven't come across it, but it doesn't mean that there isn't. Right. Okay. All right. Let, let's take, we've, we've got a ton more questions, but I, we're running out of time here, so we're going to take one more. That's fine. Okay. Can you comment on the safety of taking 252 150 milligrams of chaseberry to increase progesterone. What are symptoms of when progesterone becomes increased too much? Well, if chase tree is going to have the your gland, your ovaries, or and adrenal, all right, it's going to make them make progesterone. All right. So if you don't, if you have an empty well, if your ovaries are failing, then it doesn't matter how much you pump it. All right. So, chase tree side effects would probably give you gastrointestinal problems, maybe a little gas or bloating or loose stool. Um, progesterone, high progesterone gets to a point where you get kind of tired, silly. The pharmaceutical industry makes one called Prometrium, which is 25 milligrams, but it's in peanut oil, rapidly absorbed. And most people don't have too much trouble with that, but it's short-lived. There's 100 milligrams, and then there's 200 milligrams. A lot of times they prescribe 200 milligrams or 400 milligrams, which is a vaginal or rectal dosing, not oral. So it goes right into the system and you get tired. And as soon as you load up your empty wells, you have millions of them, right, of any hormone, they start to overflow. 
and they can cascade down, believe it or not, into the estrogen side, and you can get breast tenderness and pain, angriness, mm. depression, bloating, and fluid retention, ankle swell. So usually, if, I, I tell women who are using progesterone, I have over the counter, they can get uh, a cream uh, instead of going with a chase tree or whatever. Um, if your breasts seem full on the sides, then it's time to stop. So I don't have anyone use it every single day. Um, it, it's, if it's for PMS, it's the last 10 days of the cycle. Perimenopause, the, you have a small dose at the beginning and then an increased dose the second half. But if you feel like you're getting fluid retention, a nursing kind of feeling in the breast, it's mm. time, to, time to stop. Or if you bleed, as soon as you have a period, you stop it. But chase tree is fairly safe. It's just it's an herb, and it's a raw herb, so it, it could cause a little gastrointestinal problem. But progesterone, I, I rarely see much of it as we compound slow release, more than 100 milligrams a day, and that's usually people who are using high doses of other hormones. But usually 50 milligrams is, is about the average, 25 to 50. So, But you can't tell what that is by your chase tree. It's no kind of comparison. Okay? Right. Okay. Well, thank you, Ben, so much. Uh, it, it sounds like uh, people should consult with an expert like yourself uh, before starting on any hormone replacement regime and or supplements. Yeah. Well, I'll be glad to talk to anyone um, about that that may have listened in tonight. If I get flooded with calls, um, keep in mind I will get to you, um, but, you know, it, it, it might take a few, <laughs> might take a few, a few, day, a few days. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm just going to give them your number once again. The number okay. is 610 Three six three seven four seven four. Ben, I just want to thank you so much for being with us this evening and uh, taking the time to present this information. Well, thank you. Uh, anytime. Uh, I'll do another one again on bioidentical hormones if you want. Okay, um, sounds that good. That sounds like one the ladies would like to, to hear. The ladies and and the gentlemen. I have one on men too. Okay. <laughs> They're <Thanks>. not exempt. <laughs> All <laughs> right, Lisa. All thank right. You. Take care. All right. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. So everybody, um, the webinar for April will be on Wednesday, April 22nd. Our presenter will be Elsie Kearns. She is an Eden Energy Medicine Advanced Practitioner, and she'll be talking about what do we all want more of every day, less stress and more energy. Uh, hey, that sounds good. Yeah, so <laughs> join us for that, right? Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us this evening. Uh, again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. The replay, we'll have to see if the replay um, does not have that um, two you know, people talking in the background, and hopefully that worked out. Uh, thank you, everyone, and good night. You have a very, very natural ability to do this. It's now there's no possibility. All right, I guess you better just touch base with Ben and Yeah, I'll call him when I'm over here. It's over it's off, right? I unplugged the microphone as well. I'm just, you know, thank you. Hoping the replay is okay. Hey, well, thank you so much for that. I mean, lots of questions and people, intelligent questions too, by the way. Though. A ton more questions. And, and, and a lot more of them. Um, you know, the time didn't permit and Really, the, the, the big glitch was that the, the slides didn't come up. We'll get around that. They moved. The slides moved fine. The problem was that they weren't big enough on the screen. So um, I think what I'm going to do is try and figure out a way to... Um, uh, I'll talk to my web person and we'll just... I, I have your whole slide presentation. And what we can do is people can concurrently listen to the webinar and advance the slides.
Well, I mean, you know, you know, people just have to people have to want to get better, and people have to recognize that you know, with all the available information out there, that it's just a matter of getting the right thing and doing the right thing and being in the right place at the right time. Ben, Ben, you have to you have to unplug your microphone. Yeah, people are still hearing you. You unplugged it. He said the computer's off. Kristen can hear you two talk. Kristen can hear our conversation, so I'm not sure how we're on the phone. Um, did you unplug shut the, everything down? Hang up the phone and shut everything. I want to hang up and dial you back. Just unplug your everything. Okay, I'll, I'll dial you right back. He said his computer's off. Well, you're hooked on to somewhere. Somewhere we're I'm still plugged. Somewhere we're still plugged in. People can still hear what's going on. Okay, okay. I mean, that I, was I, I, I didn't do it, officer. Huh? Doesn't matter. I'm plugged that one, sweetie. Can you come shut this down?